Hello and welcome to Keeping It Young podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Beth Lee. And we are the Youngs. Thank you for joining us. We are happy to have you on the podcast again today and hope you've been enjoying this series we've been doing about training our children, yes. raising our children, teaching yes. our children, helping our children, and so forth. Right. And if you've been with us for the entire time, we have uh, taken several weeks, just a, a whole bunch of kind of a hodgepodge of stuff we've put together. True. But we started some weeks ago with pitfalls to avoid. Right. Remember that one? I'm I'm still um, on the hodgepodge. Yes. Was, was it hodgepodge? Well, well, it was all with the goal in mind of this is tra- that training our children is important. Yes. yes. Okay. And so then we had all kinds of ideas and thought. Okay. And then we, yes. we did after the pitfalls, we talked about questions to consider. Yes. And some must have goals. Mm-hmm. And then last week we talked about simple suggestions. Right. And uh, if you were with us last week, we talked about how to, you know, developing routines. Yes. And about simplifying our life. We ended on that one and probably mm. maybe should do an entire podcast sometime on that. <laughs> on simplifying. We are such a, goodness, a convoluted world. Right. And life is just demanding. Right. And so many parents that we talk to are, you know, part of the stress of life is schedule. And mm. part of the stress of life is just, we are running all over the place and there seems so little, you know, margin of time in our lives. Right. So that's a very important one. Really think that one through, pray about it. And uh, today we want to just continue this idea with more simple suggestions for training our children. Yes. And uh, we'll we'll finish this one today and then uh, kind of conclude everything next week. We want to talk a little bit about how to handle special situations in training our children. Mm-hmm. And hope you'll, you'll join that one. As always, we, we don't say this a lot, but we appreciate so much you that listen. And, and if you haven't left a review and would have time to do so, we'd love for you to do that on Spotify, different, you know, your different podcast uh, yes. applications. Mm-hmm. And then also, you know, share, please let, let people know if you hear a podcast, you think, boy, that might be a help to so-and-so. Right. Pass it along, share it, like it, right. put it on your social media. We would, uh, we would love for that. And we've just been amazed at uh, how many folks have listened. In recent weeks, we've, I've met a lot of people. Oh, yes. And uh, so many people that have come to see us and met with us and shared with us, you know, how that uh, even yesterday we were doing some shopping and I met a couple in, in TJ Maxx. Yes. And uh, she had shared how that uh, they occasionally listen to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so just, it's always encouraging. And if so, if you would be willing to like, share, subscribe, all of that. Please consider doing so. But right. Let's jump in and get started. You ready? I am. Okay, then let's talk today about more simple suggestions. Hmm. And uh, if you're numbering them, last week we talked about develop routines. We just mentioned that. Simplifying life. Today let's talk about two, starting with this one. Include children in your life's requirements and normal uh, normal routines. Yes, yes. And that's pretty simple, isn't it? Well, and it just makes sense. Sometimes we think of training our children, and there is the spiritual aspect that takes some special time and effort. And um, when they're really tiny, it takes special time and effort for, let's say, teaching them to feed themselves or teaching them to take themselves to the bathroom and all of that. But most of child training can be done in just the everyday minutia of life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so we made a list of just, you know, to get you thinking of of five different areas where you can just include your children. And uh, I started here with a very obvious one. I started with the word mowing. (laughs) Because this is, you know, this is one of those, one of those jobs that most people have to either pay somebody to do or find time to do it themselves. Right. And what an opportunity to do this with our children. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, mowing was, you know, something we did at least once a week, Mm -hmm. our yard. But uh, my mom also made us, you know, all the bushes had to be trimmed around. And in those days we had these handheld trimmers. They were like a scissor with a big Mm -hmm. handle on them. And I remember having, that was my job as a little guy going around all the trees and you'd have to remove all the grass that was growing, you know, the mower couldn't quite get it because it was right by the tree. Right. And we weren't to damage the trees because if the mower got too close and, you know, damaged the bark, it could also damage the tree. Right. So that was part of my job. And I remember that, uh, that was, that was something I did and actually learned to do. And to this mm-hmm. day, because I did it, right. I enjoy doing yard work, mm-hmm. but it was something that mom and dad taught me to do. And, and our, it's amazing what our children can do. They can pull weeds. Oh yes. They can rake and sooner than later they can run the lawnmower. True. And uh, it's, you know, there's something special about pushing a mower, but if you have a riding lawnmower, your children will love. (laughs) 
And, uh, you know, Learning to do isn't that. Isn't it weird, though, that our culture thinks of these kind of things as like, oh, my goodness, they're too young for that. Mm. And, oh, my goodness, you know, they're, they're so small. Why are you letting them do that? And I remember seeing on Facebook, you know, there's a picture of a young boy, and he's kind of leaning into a push mower. Mm-hmm. And someone had posted a very negative comment about, you know, who would do this to their children? Mm. And that's really sad because, in, in, you know, we're the first generation maybe that's even thought like that. Right. Because, our, you know, like my dad, when he was a little boy, he would get up every morning before school to milk cows by hand mm-hmm. and come home every afternoon and milk the cows by hand. Right. And uh, that's where the weird story comes in. I don't think we've probably ever mentioned on here about a cow stepping on my dad's bare foot and taking off his toe. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was uh, always a fun story <laughs> for my children. Such a story. <laughs> such a story. And it's a true one. And it's a true one. Yes. And if I remember all the details correctly, something of the effect of he picked it up and put it in his pocket, finished the milking and then took it to his mom and his mom my grandmother basically said get that nasty thing out of this house mm-hmm. and uh, so <clears throat> i don't even think he ever went to a doctor or anything just no, you yeah. know it clogged apparently and well this is not helping our argument that you should <laughs> include your children in the outside well, you know, work. i don't know that most kids today wear <laughs> you know milk cows and bare feet and bare f- right that's very but, true uh, the, the point of it is that my dad you know what did he was it a negative thing perhaps but the fact of the matter is things can happen you know, we're always right. terrified. We're terrified. Oh my goodness, what if, well, what if, what and if? Here's the thing. When you are teaching yard work or some type of manual labor like that to your children, that's when you also train them in all of the safety precautions that they should take. You don't just set them <laughs> on a riding mower. You don't just put them out there with a push mower. You say, these are the precautions that you take. And, and I'm sitting over here dying because I think this is a great story. And my wife <laughs> is looking totally mortified. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't help. It doesn't no. help the whole uh, she outline thinks I, She thinks I'm over here undermining the option of yes. having our children yes. work. So, and, and I was thinking too, though, um, when your dad was growing up and when we were growing up, there really wasn't the option of, well, let's just hire someone to do that. It was, we have all these children, they are going to help do that. And, and our culture doesn't have that mindset. Our culture has the mindset of, well, my children are busy. They're playing soccer. They're playing basketball. They're going to gymnastics class or whatever it is. And so we're going to hire someone to do this for us while we're all out of the house. Everyone's at school. We're at work. We're going to come home. It's all going to be done. And And I'm not saying that that's a wrong thing to do. Sometimes you do need some help. And so if you have the money, you hire someone to do it. But what we are saying is that it's a wonderful opportunity to train your children to do adult hard things and to do labor if they just do it with you. Yeah. And you know, that's an interesting point you just made there because that goes back to simplifying our life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we complicate our life with things that we believe our children must experience, but it is something something that is only valuable in the teen years and then with a question mark. True. Whereas learning how to mow, how to take care of a yard, Mm -hmm. the ramifications of that are lifelong, life-changing and bring great value all through their adult years. Absolutely. And will even help your children to train their children. Mm -hmm. This uh, work builds character. It builds integrity. It helps our children to see fruit. Yes. And it also, you know, the the, the benefits of it, and, and, and it's always good to think through the benefits of this type of activity. When you teach your when you have your children help you with things like mowing, it teaches them to take pride in what they own. Mm -hmm. All of us have driven by a house where the yard is not mown. There's trash everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, Nothing is taken care of. And you know, even Proverbs talks about driving by the vineyard of the you know the slothful man, Mm -hmm. and it's all grown up. You know, there's going to be some grapes in there, but you know, nobody to go get them is going to be a pain because you got to wade through briars and. And maybe, you know, someone will go get them, but there's nothing beautiful about that vineyard. But then all of us have driven by, you know, a home where the yard is mown, you know, well mown. Yes. And and there's the flowers are beautifully taken care of. Mm -hmm. Things are orderly. What that does is that teaches our children to to take pride in what they own. And it also, this kind of work teaches our children to value beauty. Yes. And that's kind of forgotten in our world. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is kind of an aside because, you know, we just came through October and, 
And, and if you decorate for Halloween or all of that, you know, that's between you and God. But one of the observations that both and I have made is that, well, for instance, we were in one town recently that is, you know, it's kind of known for the poverty, the, the drug culture. It's right. a small town. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing how it just home after home after home was covered with spiders and, and skeletons and Right, and the a lot of Halloween decor, and, and even a lot of it was dark and evil looking. Very dark, yes. And and so a friend of ours had said, "Wow, this town really decorates. I would love to see this town at Christmas time." <laughs> and and our friends who live in that town kind of chuckled about it because the idea for them or the the awareness, the truth for them is yes. that nobody here decorates for Christmas. Mm. And 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 I think the difference in that is that there is a beauty that is lacking in our world. Right. And this, the idea of a Christmas is, is the snow and the tree and the lights and, and it's, it's got a beauty to it. Yes. And our culture is against that. Mm. And when a home is falling apart, when a yard is not well kept, mm-hmm. when the flower beds are, you know, overgrown, we have missed beauty there. Right. And one of the things that you can do in training your children in this way, including them in life's requirements and normal routines is you're teaching them the beauty, the value of beauty. Yes. And God, in our opinion, and I believe, I believe this is all my heart, God has designed our world to be beautiful. Right, and, and orderly. Are, and orderly. And so a sunrise is beautiful. Yes. And a sunset has glorious beauty to it. Mm-hmm. And so when we, when we imitate that in our life with orderliness and neatness, there is a beauty to that that reminds our children of God. Yes. So what are we talking about here? Uh, how to include our children in life's requirements and normal routines. That's part of training them. So right. you can do that in mowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I added the word cleaning. What do you right. think about that one? Well, and I think that just reflects everything that you just said about mowing or taking care of the yard. You can do that in your house. You can bring it in and it teaches your child to take care of what God has given them it it, t- it gives them a sense of appreciation for what God has given them because they don't take it lightly if your child never has to make their bed or fold their laundry or clean the bathroom they don't appreciate any of it and so it's it's a good thing to teach them to clean just to give them chores throughout the day and of course that does take training mamas you can't just hand your child the cleaning supplies and say here go do it and expect them to know how to do it so it will take training on your part but it also brings rest to the parents once you have children who are trained that you can say hey let's all get this house cleaned up and it gets cleaned in you know a matter of you know 20, 30, 60 minutes, whatever it takes, and then you have the rest of the day. So it does teach them to appreciate things, to value things, and it teaches them hard work, that there are things that are worth working for. And then as they grow older, then they will take care of those things and they know, okay, this is going to take some time. It's going to take some effort, but it's worth it. Absolutely. And one of the things I'd add to that to you dads that are listening is that your modeling here is also a huge matter because as you, you know, you, you can set a real help for this. Mm -hmm. If mom is trying to get your teenage son to help, but he's complaining about it. And number one, you allow that to happen. And number two, you never help around the house either. Mm. Then you're modeling for your son a very negative type of behavior that can potentially affect his marriage someday. Right. And so when you help, you know, no matter what you do to help, if you if you run the vacuum, if you help with the dusting, if you uh, teach your children to show respect for mom, if you teach the, the truth that many hands make light work. Right. Uh, Dad, you're very important in this. And, mm-hmm. and mom... You know, typically our culture and, and, and often so thinks of this is, you know, mom cleans the house, dad does the yard, mm. but we can do all of those together. Oh, yes. Uh, mom can help in the yard as well. And mm-hmm. dad, you can help inside the house and getting the kids to see both sides of that has great, will add great value to their future family. Yes. Because then they can work together. Uh, mm-hmm. A husband who always sits while his wife always does the dishes. Mm. Uh, a, a wife, you know, who never, ever helps in any way or shows any gratitude for anything done in the yard. Mm-hmm. But when things have to be done in life, like cleaning, right. uh, it has to be done. Like yes. taking care of your possessions, that has to be done. Mm-hmm. When you do those things as a family, as a couple, as a family, when everybody's involved in that, mm-hmm. it brings a closeness. It brings a family pride. It 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 just is a valuable way to train right. your children. Right. And it just helps our children to understand that there are some jobs that just have to be done. You may never like it. 
they, you know, there are some jobs that I don't, I don't really care to do. Um, spring cleaning is one of those. If it's a deep cleaning, I like to do the, okay, everything looks clean <laughs> on the outside cleaning, but to do the, let's pull it all out of the closet. That is not my favorite thing to do. Now, David, on the other hand, he loves to organize. He and Charity both, they could just organize, you know, on a free Saturday with, you know, happily. It's just amazing. But anyway, so all of us have that one household chore or maybe two or three that we just don't like to do. But if you are training your children, it will make their life easier as they grow up, as they grow into adulthood. They just know, okay, this is going to take a little effort. We've got to do it and they get it done. And it's so much better. Yes. The investment, those are, those are kind of things like deep cleaning. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know that anybody necessarily likes deep cleaning, but the investment is <laughs> yes, worth the return. Absolutely. And that's why we do the hard things in life because we're making an investment that brings a return that is valuable. Yes. And so it's worth it. So we mentioned mowing. That's one way you mm -hmm. can get your kids involved. Yes. We mentioned cleaning. Yes. Uh, what's another one here? How about cooking? Now this is a big one because everybody eats. Yes. And of course you can live on TV dinners, I suppose, though I don't know that we always hear that joked about and talked about, and maybe there's people that live you know, mm -hmm, they buy pre-packaged meals and <laughs> heat them in a microwave and that's how they live. Yes. But cooking has traditionally been a very part of the family unit. Yes. And it is, and Bethany and I believe with all of our heart, it is a wonderful way for you to connect with your children, to mm -hmm. train your children. Yes. And it makes, it, it just, it has so many positive ramifications. Absolutely. It They're is a learning huge one. Life skills, just like everything else we've just been talking about, the yard work and the taking care of a house, cooking is a life skill that that they can use forever. It's just, it's awesome to get together. And then it really doesn't take all that much training. Mom, you are, or dad, you are already in the kitchen. You're already preparing a meal. Why not have your little ones do some age appropriate prep work with you, some stirring, some setting of the table. It just all, and, and again, then you have pride in your work. You can say, when you sit down at the table, you can say to your husband, hey, our daughter made whatever. And of course, dad, you will exclaim over how good it you is. Know, that, that's an amazing point there because it mm -hmm. always, it almost always, uh, it almost amuses me. Mm -hmm. how that our children will just glow yes. when we can point out, you know, she made the gravy today or right? she made the mashed potatoes today or he, mm -hmm. he made the mashed potatoes yes. today. Mm -hmm. And when you comment on that, and you know what, it teaches our children too, that the product is worth the effort. Absolutely. And uh, I think, you know, for our, our family, for you that are listening, I think for our family, it's, it's definitely Bethley. This is, this is Bethley's side of things. Bethley's a, a great cook, but it's not that she's a great cook. It's as much as she loves and enjoys cooking. I do, yes. So that our children saw that. When mom was making a great meal, our meals always, you know, Bethley would set the table. We, we would have, you know, just everything was very special about it. And a great meal taught our children, oh, this is awesome. And so they wanted, and, and when they would come in and say, you know, why are you doing that? Or how are you doing mm -hmm, that? Right. Or can I do that? Yes. And so Bethley would just always say, yeah, well, here's how you do it. And mm -hmm. uh, isn't this wonderful? And you can add this. And, and it just, the, the, all the different ideas of what our children can learn from that part of cooking is learning from those who have gone before us and talking and connecting our family, even to their heritage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I've heard Bethley say things like, well, you know, this is how mom did it. Mm -hmm. This is how your Nana did it. Right. And, uh, or this is how your mama did it. Right. And so when we would point that out, our children have a connection, you know, maybe even for my wife, for Bethley here, it was her mama. And or, that was or my, ma my grandma. Grandma was at Grandma Dennis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grandma Dennis, you know, was the one who taught Bethley so much. And when I hear, you know, Bethley mention Grandma Dennis to our children in her light of cooking, right. our kids don't know her. No. Because she They've passed. Not met her. They right. she passed before they could ever get to know her. But in some regards, they feel like they did. Right. So they can speak of Grandma Dennis in terms of reality and some right. real concrete ideas because yes. there it is. Right. And so cooking is one of those great ones. Uh, we, we threw in a couple of others here. Just how do you include your children in life's requirements and normal? You, you can, uh, you can do exercising, mm -hmm. exercise together as a family, bike together, walk together. Right. The benefits of that are not just good health, but there's a ton of conversations that happen in times yes. like that. And then just training them that this is just part of their life, that we do take care of the body that God has given us. And then shopping is another one we added. That's my favorite. 
Okay, well, I do like well, the others. But shopping, yes. though, is not always your favorite if it's like I have to go to, to right. Walmart to buy and groceries. And that's the thing. Grocery shopping can be a chore, isn't it, ladies? But this is something that your girls need to learn how to do and your boys. So occasionally take them with you. I do know that it is... So fun to go through the drive through of your favorite coffee place and get your favorite cuppa and go and wander the aisles of your favorite grocery store by yourself. And uh, sometimes when they're really tiny, that's the best thing to do. But as they're growing up, then just take one or two with you and then you can make it fun too. You can say, okay, we have these two different brands. Which one of these should we get based on our budget? Or which one do you think daddy likes better? And they can always point out, oh, daddy always gets that one, you know, that cereal or that um, brand of whatever it is. And so it it is a training time uh, and a connection time at the same time. And so it's just, this is just a way to train your children. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very practical, just include them in life's requirements and normal activities. And, you know, just maybe as an aside here. If, if this sounds so foreign to you, don't be, you know, don't feel frustrated. It just means you have work to do. Yeah. And so maybe initially you make it a rule. And as an initial rule, you know, we're going to do this every day, set a schedule by it. We're going to, this mm-hmm. is what we're going to do. Right. But, but learning to enjoy the requirements and normal routines of life is your goal. Right. And it could be, it could be as a parent that just training your kids to do these normal everyday activities. I do know that especially when they're young and just learning, that is just frustrating because you can do it so much faster yourself. But remember, the reason you can do it so much faster yourself is because someone trained you to do it. That's exactly right. So they have to be trained too. And then I have heard a few mamas who are just like, I don't want my kids to have to do that. I don't want them to have to do that. Mama, you are crippling your child. Absolutely. You are crippling them because they will, Lord willing, grow into adulthood and they will be an adult who's like, nah, I don't want to do that. That's hard to do. My mom never made me do that. <laughs> you know. And the complaining and negative spirit that follows there is yes. so damaging to an adult child. Yes. Absolutely. So be very aware of that, parents. And and before we close today, let's just add one final thing here as we're talking about more simple suggestions. And the last one we would mention to you is stay focused at all times on preparing your children for adulthood. Mm-hmm. And and there's just so many things we could say here. Just we're teaching self-control and self-denial. Right. That's why when they're little, you you say no and mean it. Yes. That's why you train obedience so that when you speak, they respond. Yes. That's why even you have to correct the mm-hmm. negative behavior. What are you doing? You're training your children for adulthood. Right. And it's hard to think that when your child is three or maybe two. Right. It's hard to think, well, you know, they're, they're cute. They're funny. You know, they pull away, they have their own will, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you know, they're so much like, and you name the mom or the dad. They just have a mind of their own. But moms and dads, you have to train starting as soon as possible. -possible, Self-control, self-denial. That means they respond when you speak. Mm -hmm. That means they're learning to obey. And when they hear your command, they respond to that. Right. means you are correcting their disobedience. You're, mm-hmm. and, and all that is a correction, uh, you know, whether that's a speaking or a spanking or whatever, mm-hmm. it's just amplifying the consequences of a negative behavior at a time when it's not as big a deal. Right. And, and, and all you're doing when it, the child is three, so you can overpower them. You can force them, you know, just by move them from a situation rather than right. teach them. Instead of saying, no, don't go towards the bonfire, you just run out after them every time and pick yeah. them up and take them away instead of saying no, you know, and, and have them respond. And, yes. and what are we doing? We're training in character, discipline, mm-hmm. absolutely. And integrity and yes. kindness yes. and hard work. All yes. of these things are part of, and you know, moms and dads, the culture we live in is, it seems like so many things are against us. We are crazy busy. We are crazy distracted. We are social media oriented and there are so many new ideas. You'll have any number of influencers come along and say, here's a better way to train your children. Right. And you'll have people come along and make these powerful emotional videos. They're not really trying to help you. What they're trying to do is to get followers. Mm, true. What they're oftentimes trying to do is to get enough followers that they can make a living getting you to read their material. True. And so it's not really focused on wisdom or helping you. It's focused mm-hmm. on finances and helping themselves. Right. And you've just got to be aware of that. You've got to continually be on guard in the culture like ours that no, it's a lot of work to train children. 
Mm-hmm. It is a lot of time. And here's our goal. Here's our aim. Here's our direction. Mm-hmm. And, and don't let anything hinder you from that. It, is it hard? Yes, it's hard. Does it take a ton of time? Yes, it takes a ton yes, of time. Yes, it does. But it yes, is so it worth does. it. And don't forget in the midst of this to instill truth. Stay faithful mm-hmm. to church. Yes. You're training children. Be in church. Worship. Serve. Yes. Mm-hmm. Support church. Love church. And even at home, make sure that church is not the only place your children learn the Bible. Right. Teach it at home. Absolutely. And have family devotions and and make sure your children are having devotions on their own and Mm -hmm. talk about the Bible and point them to the Bible and emphasize it, emphasize it, emphasize it. And there's just so many things. We have to prepare them to make a living. We have to prepare them to have a family of their own, which is why we train them, you know, to to help with children, help with the toddlers. And there are so many people that think, oh, that is so far away. If you have a two-year-old, you're thinking, oh my goodness, she's not going to have a family for 20 some years. But I will tell you that those 20 some years will go very quickly. And the training that you're doing when she is two and three and five and 10 and 15, it matters. And And remember you that have little ones, it is easy to think, well, it's not important right now. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that seems to be very obvious is that what we don't do right now, there's a good chance we'll never do. Yeah. And and that's a hard one to understand, but it is so true. What Mm -hmm. I'm not willing to do right now, I'm not willing to do at all is is one of the life's principles. Or by the time we get there, we're like, oh dear, this is just way too much. (laughs) So much better to start soon. Yes. So we're out of time today, but uh, hopefully this series has been a help to you. You know, we love, we love families. We love the home. And uh, one of the things we get so many questions about is children, our children, training our children. How do we do it? What Mm -hmm. about this? Uh, If you'll join us next week, we'll do one final, and this is kind of a loose episode. We've not, you know, not really tied everything together as far as, Mm -hmm. you know, point one, two or three, but a whole bunch of little things thrown in from the pitfalls to the questions to the goals and now to the suggestions. But join us next week, and Beth and I want to just talk about some special situations in training our children. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do if you haven't been training at all? Or what do you do if you have a divided family? Or what do you do if you're talking about the adult children whom you're concerned about? Yes. So we'll throw some special, some just some advice and thoughts about special situations Mm -hmm. and hope you'll join us for that. All right. Any final thoughts before we go today? I think we're good for this episode. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here at the Keeping It Young podcast. As always, you can reach out to us on social media. You can reach out to us from our website at thekeepingityoungpodcast.com. You can find us at evangelistdaveyoung.com as well. And certainly on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Reach out. If we can be a blessing and help to you, we would be honored to do so. In the meantime, hope you have a great week ahead. And whatever you do, make sure you serve the Lord with gladness. The Keeping It Young podcast is a Bax 5 Media production.